Welcome back to Nonprofit Megaphone Training. We are going to today review Google Analytics at a high level to provide an overview of what it is, how it works, and dive into a few of the useful reports that might be helpful for you as you embark on your digital marketing journey. Here we are at the Google Analytics homepage. You can log into Google Analytics by going to analytics.google.com and then logging in. If you um, have not yet been given access to your analytics account, you can ask your admin to give you access. The way that works is they can go to admin and then user management for any of these three levels. Um, and we can take a second to discuss what these levels are. So there's the account level, the property level, and then the view. Typically the way this works is that an organization will have a single account so for example, nonprofit megaphone. Then they'll have one or more properties. You typically create a property for each website or subdomain that you have. So we have nonprofitmegaphone.com. If we also had another website called Google Grant Management Case Studies.com, we would have a second property for that website as well. And properties nest under accounts, and then views nest under properties. So a view is a filtered view of a specific property. By default, there's the all website data view, which is created for each property, but you could also create a filtered view if you only want to look at specific traffic um, under that. And people can be added as users under each of these levels. So you could just click user management. Here, for example, let's look at it on the view. And you could add individuals and give them permissions at the view level, at the property level, or at the account level. So that um, is a quick look at the admin page. Let's go back to the home page. Now assuming that you've been added as a user and you have access to see all of this. A couple interesting graphs on the home page. This is just an overall summary. It'll, it'll show you your users, which is the number of individuals, distinct individuals, that are looking at your website or viewing your content each day. It'll show you today versus the last seven days. You also have sessions, which is the number of times a person is coming to your website. So sessions will typically be higher than users because um, in this case, one, one person might view the website on multiple occasions. They might view it on Tuesday and they might view it again on Thursday. And that would count as one user, but as two sessions. Um, you then have your bounce rate which is the percentage of people who leave your website without interacting with it, typically by going to a second page, um, or if you have conversion tracking set up, doing things like watching a video or, or some kind of other event that you're tracking. And then session duration is how long are people staying on the website. So a minute and 12 seconds is on average how long people are um, staying on the website after they land there. And it's not the most precise figure in the world, just so you know, but that's Google analytics estimate what's going on and then you'll see this real-time view will tell you how many people are live on the website right now and what they're doing currently known as live but if I went to nonprofitmegaphone.com and loaded up that page I should see myself as an active user in just a second let's see what happens boom there I am and the top active page is slash, that just means the home page. So nonprofitmegaphone.com slash nothing is the home page. A couple other um, interesting charts for you here. So these graphs show you the source of where your traffic is coming from um, each day. The different colors represent the different sources. Organic is people who are finding you by searching something in a search engine like Google and clicking on a link that is there organically, so not an ad, but just clicking on a link in the search results. Direct is people who are typing in your URL directly, nonprofitmegaphone.com, and they're hitting enter, for example. Referral is people who are getting there via a link to your site from someone else's site. Social is people, of course, clicking from a social media site, and then there's other. Um, and there are a couple other graphs here. One of the interesting ones is this donut chart which shows you the devices that people are using. So our website is actually atypical in that most viewers are looking at it on a desktop because we primarily serve nonprofits who are primarily looking at our website during their working hours 
on their work computer. For many organizations, most organizations, mobile will be um, half or more of your traffic. So it becomes really important to make sure that your mobile experience is optimized. You can also see when in the day people are viewing your website. So ours is pretty typically business hours, although it seems like Tuesday we got some people outside of business hours for whatever reason. Um, and then you have a geographic breakdown of your visitors, which is interesting. Um, one especially useful view if you're testing or setting up conversion tracking is the real-time view because it lets you see things happening in real time. And we'll talk about this in a second, but if you were setting up a conversion goal or event tracking, you'll see this is me in Chicago. Um, if you're setting up a conversion goal or event tracking, you can go to, for example, this events page, and you can see in real time what events are being fired or what conversion actions are happening. And it will let you see is the um, is the conversion tracking that you set up actually working correctly, which is a great way to um, test and debug that. So that, that is a really good view, use of the real-time view. Um, one of the other important tabs to check out is the acquisition tab, which will break down in a little bit more detail where your traffic is coming from and how each of the visitors from those different segments are performing. You'll notice here that we're not running any paid search ads um, because we're not a nonprofit, so we don't get access to the Google Ad Grant, but you will have a separate, um, you'll have an additional slice here, which will say paid search. There will be organic search and then also paid search. And paid search is your traffic that's coming through the Google Ad Grant. Um, or if you're doing other paid ad campaigns, like if, you, if you also have a second AdWords account that's a paid account, that will be included in there as well, but most likely you don't. And so that slice will be all people who are coming to you through the Google Ad Grant. And it's not uncommon for clients to have you know, 25, 30, 40, we've seen as high as 75% of their traffic coming through the Google Ad Grant. So it can be a really significant channel for you, depending on how big your website is. Um, and then you'll see a breakdown of the different stats for each channel. So what percentage of your users came through, for example, organic search, for us it's about half. And then what's the bounce rate based on how they're coming? And then what's the conversion rate? How many of the people who are visiting your website are doing conversion actions that you've deemed to be important and valuable for your organization? Another very cool page to look at is Behavior Flow, which will show you in a flow chart like graphic how people are flowing through your website. So on our website, for example, each of these blocks represent pages. Most people are coming in onto our homepage. Then you can see what's happening. So many of them are dropping off, they're reading, they're understanding what they need to understand, and then they're leaving. And then the biggest percentage of them are actually going and viewing our company page, which is interesting to us because we never thought about that. We never, frankly, paid a lot of attention to the company page. It was, it was always sort of an afterthought. The team page is also very commonly viewed, which surprised us. Um, and so that lets us know, okay, a lot of people, after they read the home page and they want to learn more, they're going to the company page, they're going to the team page. Sometimes they're going to the company page first and then to the team page. Um, so those are pages that we really need to pay attention to and that we need to focus a lot of our effort on. And that's very easy to see from this graph, but hard to see from other points, um, which is great. It also gives you a sense of which of your pages are performing better than others in terms of bringing in new traffic. So a lot of people are coming into this ultimate list of nonprofit marketing ideas. This is a blog post that we wrote. So you have a lot of people coming in, but a lot of them are also dropping off. So we probably need to be including more calls to action, more next steps for people to take after we view that page. We can drill into this a little bit more deeply. If you go to site content, you'll be able to see all of the pages on your website listed in a table format with their stats. So our homepage has the most visitors by far, and then second is this page right here. So this is a, a blog post that we wrote. We haven't done anything to market. It's just been getting organic traffic through you know, search engines like Google. Um, and you'll see that people actually spend quite a while. They spend almost four minutes reading that article, looking through the, the different marketing ideas, and they're becoming familiar with us and our brand. Um, 
which is a great thing. And it, it gives you a sense of, okay, what are the different pieces of content that are being more successful on your site? Um, the next thing that we'll look at quickly, so this, this gives you a sense of understanding what's happening on your website in terms of what pages are people looking at, how long are they staying, how, um, what percentage of them are going to other pages versus clicking around. One of the really important things to look at is goals. So what are the individual actions that you're tracking so that you can record and optimize um, for those types of things to be happening more often? There are a couple different types of goals you can create. Um, you name each of them. And then you can create goals of a couple different types. So you can create a destination goal, which is people landing on a key page. So for example, if you have a form that you want people to fill out and afterwards they get sent to a thank you page, you can track that as a destination goal where anytime someone lands on nonprofitmegaphone thank slash thank you so much for signing up, we would know, okay, that person just signed up for whatever it is we were letting folks sign up for, and we would track it as a destination goal. You can also track duration goals, so how, mi how many minutes, how long are people spending on the site, which is a good proxy for engagement, or you can track the number of pages or screens that they're looking at in an individual visit. And then finally, one of the most powerful types of tracking that you can enable is event tracking. This is done through a separate tool called the Google Tag Manager, which we can get into in a different video, but that lets you um, fire events. So if someone does something like scroll a certain distance down the page, or view a video, view a video all the way, click a button, click a button off your site to another site. Normally these things are hard to track, but the Google Tag Manager lets you send an event to Google Analytics. It's called an event and then record that as a conversion as well. Um, and so that uh, that would be that event tracking type of goal. And we have a whole nother video, a 25 minute long video that walks you through an example step-by-step -step of how to do that. Um, and we're happy to help with that as well if that would be of help to you. Um, I hope this has been helpful. I hope this gives you at least a quick overview of Google Analytics and what it can do for you. We are more than happy to answer any questions or help out however we can. Um, we've also started helping our clients build dashboards um, or building it for them in Google Data Studio, which lets you build a real-time shareable dashboard that you could share with members of your board or other members of your team for reporting. Um, and we'd, we'd actually really recommend that you maybe use Google Data Studio for that type of external reporting and then use Google Analytics for your own internal analysis and trying to understand um, your visitors and demographics and how you can improve your site. So I hope this has been helpful. Please let us know how we can continue to help and have a great rest of your day.